everyone. So today in this session, we're going to discuss oil field exemptions. So I deal with a lot of oil and gas companies. And one thing that I hear all the time is I qualify for well site waiting time, but they don't. So that's what we're going to discuss today. And we're going to discuss how that actually works, uh, the different exemptions that you may qualify under oil field exemption, but there are actually two different kinds. So with oil field exemptions, there's two parts to that. There's the part that says you qualify for the 24 hour restart versus the 34 hour restart. So the 24 hour restart applies to anybody that's exclusively operating in an oil and gas industry. So if that's all you do is oil and gas, then yes, you probably do qualify for the first exemption, um, the 24 hour restart versus the 34 hour restart. But a lot of companies think they qualify for part two, which is the well site waiting time, but they don't actually qualify for it. So I'm gonna read you the rules and then I'm gonna explain kind of each one. So in part one, in the instance of drivers of commercial motor vehicles used exclusively in transportation of oil filled equipment, keep in mind exclusively, in the transportation of oil filled equipment, including the stringing and picking up of pipe used in pipelines and servicing of field operations of the natural gas and oil industry, any period of eight consecutive days may end with the beginning of an off-duty period of 24 hours, um, 24 or more successive hours. So that means it has to be um, consecutive. It can't be broken up into, you know, eight hours here, 10 hours there, whatever. It has to be consecutive. But basically all that's saying is that instead of 34-hour restart, you qualify for 24-hour restart. The second part reads, in the case of specially trained drivers of commercial motor vehicles, which are specially constructed to service oil wells, on-duty time shall not include waiting time in a natural gas or oil well site, provided that all such time shall be fully and accurately accounted for in records to be maintained by the motor carriers. Such records shall be made available upon request of the Federal, Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. Basically what that is, you know, referred to as is the well site waiting time. Just because you may potentially have specially trained drivers in oil and gas industry does not necessarily mean you qualify for this. So let's just go over this just a little bit because I want to clarify this for you. So with well site waiting time, um, only when qualified for both parts can you use the well site waiting time. So, of course, you may qualify for the 24-hour restart, but that doesn't necessarily mean you qualify for well site waiting site. So, if you do qualify for well site waiting time, what this means is two separate, two separate periods in a resting in a sleeper berth or in other sleeping accommodations at a natural gas or oil well site, totaling 10 hours as long as neither period is less than two hours. So, you can have two separate periods. So, that could be, you know, eight and two, it can be six and four, it can be, you know, something of that nature, but it can't be less than two hours. So typically that's eight and two, six and four, seven and three, something like that. Um, driving time immediately before and after each rest period does not exceed 11 hours. So you still can't drive more than 11 hours in that, in that shift. The driver doesn't drive after the 14th hour coming on duty. Um, Off-duty time does not go against the 14-hour rules. So where this helps you quite a bit is your clock stops. So whenever you go off-duty, your clock actually does stop, but you have to take into account the time that you worked before when you started coming on duty. And then you're going to just ignore all the off-duty well site waiting time part, and you're going to add that to whenever you start again, and that's you can kind of combine the two together. So that's where your 14 hours actually does come into play. Um, once 10 hours are accumulated, of off-duty period. Drivers may drive again, but the driving time before and after the last rest period when added together may not exceed 12 hours or 11 hours, and the 11 consecutive hours of driving are not available again until they take that 10-hour reset. So all this is doing for you is stopping the clock while you're waiting at a well site. It does not extend the 14-hour period. It doesn't extend the 10 hours that are required to be off-duty. It just lets you split that off-duty period up so that you can have an eight and two, a six and four, a seven and three, something of that nature to equal 10 hours off duty in between each shift. So things to keep in mind, um, pick one. So when you use oil field exemptions, you don't qualify for short haul exemptions. You can't use both. An oil field, whenever you're using oil field exemptions, you have to use a logbook or ELDs. 
you can't use short haul exemptions. So you can't be oil field and short haul. Most oil and gas service companies qualify for part one, but not part two. Qualifying for the exemptions does not remove the responsibility for fatigue drivers. So I see this a lot, and I know a lot of you in the oil and gas industry, you're tired right now. Um, it's, you work a lot of hours, your drivers work a lot of hours, and it's, there's fatigue over there. Um, I've been in West Texas, I've been in the Permian Basin, I lived there for, for quite a few years. I see it every day and I have a lot of clients in your industry. If you're oil and gas, I have a lot of clients in your industry. Um, what I'm seeing more of is that they might be totally compliant with the regulations, but those drivers are still fatigued. So that does not, just because you might be in compliance with the rules does not mean that you can totally ignore the fact that your drivers are tired. If your drivers are tired, they shouldn't be driving, plain and simple. So that's something that, that the oil and gas industry is going to have to address, something you're going to have to address. So take that into account. If your driver's tired, they shouldn't be driving. That automatically disqualifies, disqualifies them from driving is when they're tired. So don't allow that. Um, whenever they put this rule in place, with the, with the oil field exemptions and the well site waiting time exemptions, uh, before the ELD mandate came out, you had to have a separate logbook. So if you look at this logbook, it has the regular four grids right here, the off-duty, sleeper berth, driving, and on-duty. But then if you look down here, this is a standard J.J. Keller uh, logbook. There's other companies that do logbooks as well. Um, but they have pretty good logbooks, so I, I just use this as an, as an example. But if you look down here, line five, you have well site, off-duty well site waiting time. They cannot use this off-duty line up here. They have to bring it down, write the comments, and they have to write their off-duty well site waiting time down here. Um, investigators and officers will verify this. They are going to verify via GPS records or things like that to see exactly where you were. They're not going to just take your word for it and say, well, I was off duty well site waiting time. Um, they're actually gonna check your GPS records and see if you actually were legitimately at a well site while you were waiting and while you did this off duty period. But this line five has to be used. So that doesn't mean you have to use paper log books. So obviously, um, if the ELD mandate applies to you, you're gonna have to use the ELDs. So in, most ELD systems, they do have the oil field well site waiting time as an option that you can choose whenever you set up that ELD system for that particular truck. So make sure before you are using any kind of ELD system, verify before you agree to purchase that ELD system that they do have that well site waiting time if it's gonna to apply to you and that you're gonna be able to use it because if they don't have that option available, you're not gonna qualify you are not gonna be able to use it because the rule says you have to use that well site waiting time. So with that said, just wanted to be clear on that. And also, before we go, I want to be clear on what actually qualifies. So just because, like I said before, just because your drivers you know, might be specially trained and, and you have all these arguments of why they should qualify, I'm gonna tell you some of the things that do not qualify, they never will qualify. Any kind of hot shot, Flatbed operation, you don't qualify. You just don't qualify. Water haulers, you don't qualify. You're not gonna qualify. Now, if you have a kill truck, that qualifies. Um, they actually just put recently, um, I don't know how recent, but a, a little while back, they actually included sand haulers because they're for quite a while. Sand haulers also were not qualified to use this well site waiting time. But now sand haulers are qualified to use a well site waiting time as long as they can show that the manufactured, the trailer was actually specially designed only for oil and gas. So there's some extra paperwork that you're going to have to have um, to show that the, the manufacturer settings are just for oil field. But if you can prove that the driver was specially trained and it's just specifically used for oil and gas industry, then potentially you can use that. So verify that you have that documentation and just to be safe i would keep that documentation in the truck because if you don't keep it in the truck proving that you qualify for the well site waiting time i would include that mandate or that memo that the fmcsa put out i would include that memo in there as well as um, 
something from your company saying this vehicle and this driver qualifies for well site waiting time. That way, whenever an officer stops you, there's no question about it. Um, the driver can just show them the letter from the company and the, the memo from the FMCSA saying that sand haulers can. Um, and some other coil tubing operators, yes, you do qualify. Um, like I said, kill trucks qualify, things like that. So keep that in mind. I just wanted to be clear on that oil and gas exemption because a lot of companies out there, you think that you qualify and you don't necessarily qualify like water haulers. Um, anytime you're in a pickup truck and you know, you're know you delivering stuff via a pickup truck, typically you're not gonna qualify because for one, the, the vehicle's not specially designed for oil and gas operations and the driver's not necessarily specially trained to operate that pickup truck. It's just a pickup truck. So it's not gonna, it's not gonna qualify. So keep that in mind. Thanks guys, have a great day.